everybody. Today's video has been inspired by some of the comments that I've received on my channel regarding op amps and the ability to piggyback them. And I've seen one or two examples on other people's channels where they have literally just piggybacked another chip on top of another one varying comments um, ranging from oh it sounded better than the best i see on the market to the chips got very hot to the chips went bang uh, the, it was oscillating so quite a wide range of opinions there now for what it's worth my opinion is it's not a good idea We'll talk more about that later. But the main thing is, I'm not going to just talk about it. I'm going to do it. What I've done, I've purchased a board from Ali or eBay, one of the, one of the two. And it's basically reputed to be a headphone amplifier. It's claim to fame is four of these 5532s are basically in parallel. To be fair, they have put isolating resistors on there, so there's a fairly good chance it will work. So first of all, I'm going to show you the board and what you get for the money. And then I'm going to populate it. And if there's no issues in building it, I won't show you anything about it because just seeing somebody soldering components on the board it's a little bit boring, in my humble opinion. This is a top view of the PCB, and its claim to fame, if there is such a thing, is designed by LJM, which, whether that means he's specified the components or what, I just don't know. But you never can tell with these Chinese modules, they could be a fake. Anyway, let's flip over the board and have a look at the other side. Unusual for a kit, some of the components, like these resistors, are surface mounts and they are already pre-soldered on the board. Personally, I'd rather have components that you can are, are through hole, basically. They're a lot easier to deal with, but the fact these are ultra small, you can see by the size of my finger. As you can see, these are the two voltage regulators which are 12 volt you can see here that has clearly been taken off another board oh. what they've done to them i'm not sure because the legs don't look second hand so it rather looks like they've used the die of something else and and whilst i don't think you'll be able to see it on here let's get a torch can you see it's clearly, yeah, you can see it there. It's clearly had the numbers milled off and they've printed some of the other, but they haven't milled it far enough. And you can see the original surface is there. And the other one, yeah, they've milled the whole surface there. You can see the little circle on the left is almost level. So they've clearly milled that and printed a new number on there. Oh. This is the range of capacitors and they're all unknown or unmarked brands except for these green ones which are branded Sanyo. Whether they're genuine Sanyo or not, your guess is as good as mine. These are the 5532s and I'm just going to check them now with the meter to see if they're genuine or not. No prizes for guessing whether they are or not, but just for interest, place your bets now. I'll take you out of your misery right now. You will be amazed, possibly more or less than me, I don't know, but they are genuine. <laughs> What can I say? I'm, I'm, I'm speechless and lost for words, both at the same time. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a silly minute. 
Anyway, I'm going, there are other components, there's a potentiometer, but there's nothing special to say about it. It's not an Alps or anything wonderful, but I've used these pots before. It's one of these, they're, they're okay. Oh, the only other comment I'm going to make, as I should be putting chips in and out, unfortunately, they haven't supplied holders for the chips. But I've got a drawer with thousands of them in over there, so I shall put the holders on there. Then at least we can pop chips in and out at random. Well, it's all soldered up and it went together pretty well without any issues at all. The only thing I would comment on is there's some rather strange design here. Here is the input. And yet... These capacitors normally should be standing up, but then you can't get access to the socket here. So no big deal, I've just laid them down. But it seems like uh, Mr. LJ or whatever his name is, hasn't really thought about this properly. This one's not too bad. Now I did mention on the early part of the video that the voltage regulators were more than likely fakes in some way but now they're mounted can you see they're both supposed to be from the same manufacturer and yet the heat sink metal is really thin on that one and really thick on this one clearly they're using bits of junk to put this together let me turn up the gain and show you some results Here's a square wave coming up at one kilohertz, so not terribly difficult to work with. And look what we've got. Oscillation and overshoot. Now all I'm doing here is you're operating the volume control on the preamp itself. And you can see it varies quite dramatically. Let's reduce the gain of the scope. And at certain places, it doesn't oscillate like that. Ridiculous overshoot. But if there are, all of a sudden it springs into oscillation again. But it oscillates primarily at about 50% of the... Um, gain control and if I crank it up I can't measure it on square waves but if I switch over to sine waves same frequency one kilohertz it's having trouble syncing by the way because it's trying to sync on one kilohertz but this is the oscillation so if I crank up the time base now so that's the actual oscillation and I don't know if you can see it here but it's eight it's it's varying a bit but it's just under 900 kilohertz now you can see here I've removed the actual input so and this is operating the volume control it's swinging around a bit because it's affecting the DC offset but that's with 50% of the gain on the pot and clearly that is the the oscillation frequency the display now is for a 10 kilohertz square wave and as you can see massive overshoot and lots of oscillation this is me and that's me touching the pot by the way so that excuse that I um, just want to turn it down to show you what's happening. Now, ironically, when you listen to this, clearly your earphones or anything cannot pick up 900 kilohertz. But it comes through the sound as a harshness. And initially, when I listened to this amplifier or preamp, whatever you'd like to, well, it's a bit of both, really. It just, it, it seemed to have quite a bit of detail, but there was a harshness to it. And it's only now I've got it on the bench, I can see why.
To summarize, basically I think this whole board is flawed and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. First of all, there was the problems with oscillation. I've, I've got rid of that to a degree by removing the resistor, resistor 10 because that resistor being there just does not make any sense at all and I have removed it now it's it's to a large degree helped with the stability of the amplifier in general but it just shouldn't be there so if you've got one of these kits just hack that resistor out you don't have to short it link it just remove it and of course um, that's resistor 3 on the other channel I've shown you the circuit. Considering it's such a simple circuit, the actual circuit diagram supplied bears little resemblance to what you've actually got. All the resistors from the output that link all the op amps to the output, they're specified as 10 ohms, and in reality they're 4.7 ohms which I would suggest is a little on the low side, which probably accounts for the, the fact that it likes to break into oscillation very readily. Now, I did experiment with a 68 picofarad capacitor across resistor 2, and that made it quite a bit more stable because obviously it's reducing the high frequency limit of the preamp. That was fine, but when you then plug in your headphones, it still oscillates. So to have it not oscillate when it's not connected to a load is kind of pointless, I think you'll agree. I've removed that 68 picofarad because in the real world it made no difference. Now the purpose of actually building this is not because I need a headphone amplifier, but because there's been so much talk on the forums and um, people just paralleling countless quantities of double five three twos. Some people have said that it makes the chip run hot, which it does because they do interact with each other. And the, the biggest problem is it makes them oscillate. If it was oscillating at three or four kilohertz, you'd hear it and it would be awful and you'd, you'd, you'd say, oh, this is rubbish. But the fact that it oscillates at 900 plus kilohertz, you clearly can't hear it. But what it's doing is making the chips run very hot, in my opinion, too hot. And also you're bound to get harmonics and, and it, the only way I can describe it is it makes the sound a little hard compared with what I would normally expect for a double five three two. Whatever you do, don't try and put a better for performance chip in there like the LME series we've been talking about, because if it oscillates with a five five three two, it, it will go supersonic with a high speed chip like the LME. But the best advice I can give you is just don't buy this kit. If you want a headphone amplifier, the AccuPhase clone preamp that I presented well, a month or so ago wipes the floor with this. I mean, it really does. It measures infinitely better and it's rock stable. As per usual, thank you for watching. Much appreciated. Bye bye.